Hey there, uh, this is all of my steampunk stuff. I realized I didn't actually show off any of this stuff in depth. Um, just a couple of short demos here and there, but um, yeah, this was originally supposed to have been for a steampunk event last November, and I actually started this about a year, a year ago. <laughs> I don't know what that was. But I started this about um, a year ago and kind of went off the deep end just trying to make as much stuff as I could for this um, steampunk event, but I ended up not going and I went to something else. But uh, um, it was originally supposed to be like me and a couple of friends to go and they were getting stuff ready, but something fell through and they weren't able to attend. Um, well, Mike was, he came with me. But um, this ended up being like a couple of different characters worth of stuff because like I can't wear, you know, a long coat an apron and the shirt all in the same costume because that would look ridiculous. And on top of that, a jetpack and two forms of headgear. Yeah, it just, it was entirely too much to have for one character. So I ended up splitting it up into primarily two different characters. There's the gunslinger um, that uses the coat um, and the shirt, but uh, the hat, the holster, um, the half chaps, that kind of stuff. Uh, they kind of go with either of the characters, but um, that's primarily that one. But the other one is like a steampunk engineer, steampunk mechanic, um, inventor. Uh, that's obviously the apron, um, the uh, face shield, and then the, um, the jet pack. <laughs> and I think I, I intended for the steampunk lightsaber chainsaw gunblade to be for that character originally because when I first heard about this, this is immediately what jumped into my head. And it was pretty much just fully formed. Um, and all I had to do was just figure out a way to put it together. So this is the uh, lightsaber chainsaw gun blade. The um, pull string right there. Oh, I forgot how freaking noisy this thing is. But, um, but yeah, it's got uh, a prism in it and it uses NeoPixels. Um, you can sort of see in there where the new pixels are, um, not very well, but really all this was was just gluing stuff together and trying to come up with something that looked cool. I had um, this cylinder, it was actually an MHS custom blade holder that uh, was made by Arm on Fire uh, for um, Halon Customs, but um, ended up giving it to me, so I was just like, uh, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this, but I'll definitely make something cool with it. That was in like 2009. <laughs> so I um, I ended up cutting it in half and then putting each half on here for the whole gun blade aspect of it. But um, the little indicator here, um, that's just a couple of bottle caps that I cut up and um, some old greebles like this little green part right there. I don't remember what that greeble was was from, but um, it works well for a whole bunch of different things, and it was in a Groflex at one point. But um, the uh, uh, the trigger is just a snap action switch that um, I put a little gear on, and that's the main activation. Um, by the way, this is really noisy, so stand back. So yeah, it's a prism so that it can do all the different uh, new pixel animations. And the scratching this means the battery's dying. I have no idea if you were able to hear me <laughs> through all that. But um, the battery is just in this little thing up here. It's a single 18650. Um, so you can actually, I don't know if you can see, but if I need to swap it out during an event or something like that, it's easy to swap out. A um, couple of interesting things on here. Uh, that's a circuit card from Graflex clamp. Um, I think this is actually used to be a, a Yeni. This is a 5 Yen, but um, I think this is a pendulum for like a clock kit. And here's the minute hand for said clock kit. Um, the other side, is there anything interesting on the other side? Not really, there's a Tampa handle. Yeah. This is obviously the interesting side, so. Um, moving on, this is the, well, it's a, it's a face shield. It's the same 
3M face shield that I ordinarily use, like when I'm working and cutting and stuff like that, it's just that uh, uh, it's painted to look like a uh, kind of like a miner's helmet, um, riveted, and it, or like I kind of started looking at pictures of like diving helmets, like vintage diving helmets and stuff to get some of the whole the brass with the oxidization um, references and stuff like that. Um, oh, uh, the there's an old Corbin driver in here for the. Um, actual light up aspect of it um the uh corbin driver i don't know if you could tell but it's flickering and it has the whole fade on fade off aspect and if you play with a little bit um it'll flicker a little bit more but um, that's kind of in keeping with the old timey um headlamp and stuff like that but um the switch is just from an old lamp that the um spigot handle ended up working out really uh, fitting perfectly and it, it just is it, it very appropriate um there's a uh this was a door knocker or something like that or a door like a drawer handle i got it from ramayana which is a japanese store a long time ago but this is how i hang it up the jetpack um starting with the, the glove here this is just an archery arm guard and I took the little drawstring off and then the um, put on some brass bars and then painted it and whatnot. Same thing with the Nintendo controller. Mind your toes, love. Um, it's just a standard Nintendo controller that uh, I gutted, kept the buttons. Um, it's kind of cheating because this is the uh, the main power. This is the activation, and everything else is the aux button. So. So they all do the same thing. Also very loud. I don't know why I made all these noisy things, but um, yeah. So this is another exercise in gluing trash together. <laughs> um, the, uh, the body itself is... Um, uh, EVA foam. Uh, again, this is the Parmesan cheese container. These are the Tylenol bottles. Orange juice bottle cap, orange juice bottle cap, Rust-Oleum paint bottle or um, cap for that. Um, the uh, bottle caps for the um, Tylenol bottles and stuff, that's what these things are up here. I just gutted them so that you can see them a little bit better for the indicator dials and then I put some stickers in there. Not, it doesn't move. It's just a static thing. But um, one thing I thought was kind of funny was that um, this is power level, which is at about halfway, and this one is uh, danger level, which is pretty pretty high. So this isn't exactly the safest jetpack out there. But um, what are you gonna do? It's a steampunk jetpack. Um, this is again the uh, soy sauce bottle top. Um, this was a. Uh, it was the attachment for a hair dryer, and um, I don't know what else to say about that. Then it was the attachment to a hair dryer, but that's what the speaker is in there. And this is just um, EVA foam tube, foam dowel that um, I cut in half and sort of painted to look like iron. And then the rusting effect is the same thing that I did for the uh, Master Sword. You just dab on some Mod Podge and then take like a brush and then dab on some of that. Uh, rust powder coat and then put the and cover it up with the uh, Mod Podge just to seal it in but um, Again with some of the oxidization. Um, I think that turned out really really well just with the greens and stuff like that um, This Is an old paint bottle like um, the little 8 ounce paint bottle 12 ounce. I don't know how much it was, but uh, this came from the um, laundry detergent there was a little there's a button here and then it comes out this way, but um, this was all of those great pump greebles that I was talking about. Um, there is really no rhyme or reason to it other than the fact that they're just cool greebles. And um, yeah, I put a hinge on EVA foam. I don't know why, but it works. Um, the whole point is that this opens up so that you can get to the electronics inside and it's just buttoned down with these leather straps and stuff like that but um on both sides so 
really you just undo all of these things and then you should be able to open it up um, to get to the battery and all the LEDs and stuff. So uh, the belt here, this was a cheapo old Han Solo belt. By the way, this is my super awesome hero belt by Ar Arsenal. Thank you, Darren. It's awesome. I kind of repurposed it for this steampunk aspect um, and added some panels and stuff like that, paint, rivets, the typical um, steampunk fare. And then I basically, let me show you from a different angle. This is my LPA NN14, one that I made from scratch, like um, uh, Sintra and stuff like that. How am I gonna get this thing out one-handed? You know what? This is gonna stay in there forever. But um, I just uh, put it on a different font so that it's more gun and like analog centric. But um, yeah, and then pretty much just gutted it, put some piping around it so that it looks a little bit more steampunk and these things, whatever. <laughs> so the costume used um, these uh, they're called half chaps, but um, they're elastic and they go over your calves and on your feet um, and uh, uh, under your, your feet and stuff like that. But um, I just attached some of these panels to it. They're just EVA panels, but um, again, to look like, you know, some sort of armor. Um, it goes well with the, uh, the gunslinger, but at the same time, it also works with the steampunk engineer thing. But um, I did this with uh, a lot of the panels to sort of decorate the person. And I have no idea what it implies or what it means. It's just some, one of those things where like you have the vertical versus the horizontal um, piping. Same thing on the belt. You have the vertical and the horizontal piping. Um, and then another one example is uh, this. This is just a bracelet on the, with the link gloves. Um, but uh, just to sort of add to the whole decor or the uh, theme of whatever that theme was. Um, so... The hat. The hat is a gambler. Apparently that's called the, the style. But um, the little brim around it, um, and there's an antenna, which uh, that's where I got the idea to do the uh, antenna for the fridge. But um, there's an antenna on this guy's hat. But uh, it was an old flashlight that um, was damaged somewhere along the way, but the rest of the flashlight body worked. So I just repurposed that with a switch and the battery tube, swapped out the LED for Makoto Sai, which I still have a whole bunch of Makoto Sai LEDs and they are still super bright on really low current and you get a lot of bang for your buck, which is why there's one, two, three, four of them on this thing. Um, and you can run it off of three volts, which is like two triple A's and stuff like that. So, um, but it looks really cool on the, uh, the wearer, but, um, the practicality of it, why does it have lights on it? Why is there an antenna? I, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It is, it just is. Um, okay, so clothes. This is a, um, a tailcoat that um, I got off of Amazon. It was pretty cheap. I think it was like maybe 60, 70 bucks, but um, it's really thick, heavy cotton and it's um, it drapes really well. Um, it works well with the uh, the high collar shirt, um, and overall, it's a really just it's a good example of um, you know steampunk and stuff, and it really fits the theme really well. Um, and then you put the hat on top of it, and bam, there you go. That's awesome. But um, yeah, so I couldn't wear that and the apron at the same time. But um, I uh, I made both of them, and this one. Um, was originally the uh, uh, the character that I was wanting to play, but for some reason I just ended up keeping. I just kept going. <laughs> but um, I love the idea that he's got a to-do list on his chest, which sort of uh, Doc Brown, absent-minded mad scientist kind of idea. And then on top of that, it's got mundane things like feed cat, test radiationizer on Megan. On repair. Oh wait, I got to the front window. Cool, I can cross that off the list. But um, Megan is um, Mike's wife, and uh, I thought that would be a really funny joke if she saw it, and I don't know if I ever showed it to her. <laughs> anyway, 
Um, this is an old um, pocket watch that I got from Steve many years ago. Um, I don't know why it opens because you can actually see through it, but either way, it's awesome. And um, does it work? Yeah, it works. But um, again, just sort of fitting the theme. There's uh, lots of stains, and I like the idea that the to-do list is also burned and stained and stuff like that. And there's green stuff splattered all over the place. Um, this was just a couple of scraps of leather that happened to kind of line up, and I thought it made for a nice random logo. I have no idea what the logo is for, but whatever. Um, uh, the belt here, this is an old belt, and I just hot glued it and then painted it to make it look like it was secured like with tar and stuff, so. Shirt, uh, old timey high collar shirt. I got the, uh, the sleeve stays on there and that actually looks really well. It looks like an old bartender or barber and stuff, but um, I took some old brass rivets to be the, um, the buttons and stuff like that, like a tuxedo. But uh, this also has like, you know, stains, <laughs> presumably in the same explosion of green stuff that occurred somewhere around here. But um, but yeah, it, again, it just to sort of sell the character and it, in keeping with the uh, um, the theme of mad scientists doing weird things. So um, I think that's it out of all of this stuff. I'll add some pictures of the... Um, the me in costume after this and stuff, but I think that's about it. It was really fun, and I'm surprised and kind of embarrassed that I, it took so long for me to show all this stuff off, but uh, yeah, that's all the steampunk stuff, so see you later.